Welcome back to Java with Miyoshi. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit about IDEs, Integrated Development Environment, and um, comments, and a little bit about errors. So, um, integrated, de integrated Development Environments, they are uh, what you use to program your Java in, and there are many different flavors of uh, IDEs. I happen to use Eclipse, and have used Eclipse for Java for quite a while, the newest, uh, latest and greatest version is Oxygen, so you can just go ahead and download Eclipse and put it on your computer and away you go. Um, I want to talk about um, errors. If you are afraid of making mistakes, then you might not want to become a computer programmer because you're going to make mistakes every single day that you write a computer program. Um, so if you're afraid of failure, get over it, you'll be fine. Just make errors and move on. Yeah, that's the way you learn, and the more errors you make in a day or in a session of programming, uh, the better you'll get. As long as you fix those errors, of course. Uh, so, but there are three kind of errors that we normally see, and those are syntax errors, uh, the errors where you write the code wrong, uh, you forget a semicolon, for instance, at the end of your line, uh, you write um, a keyword incorrectly, maybe use capital F-O-R instead of lowercase F-O-R or something like that. Runtime errors are a little bit harder to, to detect sometimes. Um, they are things where you compile the program, you get it to run, and it runs a little bit, and then all of a sudden it, it stops. Maybe because you forgot to initialize a uh, variable or you didn't get input from the user or something like that. It's a little bit um, tougher to find those kind of errors, but they present themselves fairly quickly as you run them. Uh, another kind of error you have is a logic or algorithmic type of error. Those are the toughest ones to find. They are usually found in runtime as well. Uh, so they are kind of a subset of runtime errors. But these algorithmic errors are much tougher to find. Matter of fact, you have to kind of design test cases for your, uh, to find algorithmic errors. Matter of fact, you want to test, test, test all the time your code. Uh, write a little bit of code, then test it, then write a little bit more code, then test it, then write a little bit more code and test it. One of the ones, uh, one example I would give you for testing is if you have a trigonomic function, for instance, and you have you have to use sine and cosine. Um, if you put in values that you know, for instance, the sine of zero degrees is zero, the sine of the cosine of zero degrees is one. If you know those kind of things, you're you can write test cases and test your program to make sure it does what you need to. So you test the extremes. The, uh, that you know, maybe the initial conditions, um, the lowest values, the maximum values, whatever the case might be, but test things that you know and uh, make sure that your code works. The last thing I'll talk about uh, a little bit is, is comments. You always want to write code in, or you want to write comments in your code, uh, whether you're writing in uh, Java or C++ or whatever it happens to be, C Sharp, write comments in your code. This becomes especially important as you start working in groups. Um, when you write for yourself even, you want to write code, uh, write comments so that you can remember what happened uh, two days down the road, four days down the road, a week, a month, two months, two years, whatever it happens to be. You want to write, make sure you write comments so that you can uh, remember what you did. A uh, couple things about comments. Here's my system out dot print line again, hello world. Um, I have a comment at the end of that code, a slash slash gives you comments. Um, and that will comment from whatever that slash slash is to the end of the line, that is all comments. And comments, again, are not compiled. The compiler doesn't compare about them. The computer doesn't care about them. They're just there for you as the coder. If somebody ever says you should comment out a line of code, you just put a couple slashes in front of the, the code that you've written. Those slashes say, the slash slash says, hey, this is a comment now, so whatever is there before, even if it's legal code, uh, it's not going to be run. Uh, another thing you could do, and it's a nice thing to do, especially at the front of your code, but anytime, any other place you want to put it, you can put comment blocks, uh, star, a slash star, and a star slash. Anything between those, however far, however long much is between them, uh, those are comments. So whether that's on one line, or seven lines, or three lines, or however many lines it happens to be, a slash star and a star slash Anything between those two things is a comment block. And use those to your best advantage to show um, comments in your code, uh, keep a log of what you've done, uh, maybe have notes about what you're planning to do. Those are things that 
I like to do in my code, and especially the longer code that I write. Um, get in the habit of that as you write smaller code too, because then you'll keep be, be in that habit, um, that good habit, for as long as you're writing code. So, uh, just a few things again. Uh, integrated development environment, IDE, uh, errors and comments. Again, don't be afraid to make errors. If you're afraid to make errors, uh, you'll, you'll code less than you would if you were just out there writing down code and testing, testing, testing. Um, so, uh, thanks for tuning in and come on back for more Java with Miyoshi. See you next time.